You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 97 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. And this is Sofia Yakela. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. If Casey were with me, as you know, Casey is my co-host. She wasn't here today, but if she were, here's what she'd say. She'd say this podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WESA, providing the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equine industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Now, don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. And so, Fia, we have some news to share. So why don't you go ahead and start us out? Yes, you might have heard it just now in the opener. Let's congratulate them again as the Horse Radio Network is now part of the Equine Network family of companies. And besides additional support, nothing really changes for our listeners or for our show or how we do things. But we still wanted to take a minute to just congratulate them. What's happening at the WISA office? So we just finished the space assignment. That's for all of the temporary booth spaces on the 11th floor at the DMC. And we sent each exhibitor that made it into the show an email and a letter. We do have some companies that are still trying and hoping to um, actually exhibit in January. That is because we are actually sold out. So we are excited to welcome more exhibitors and hopefully there were also more retailers to the January show a sold out show. So you are sold out. So the next step for the January uh, show is just to get ready to help all those retailers, uh, all those exhibitors and all those retailers who are going to show up. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. The booth assignments have been mailed out. The directory is being proofed and soon to be printed and sent out. The floor plans are updated. So yeah, all that's left is just for the retailers to get their buyer badges in advance and as always, you can get them online now at westsidetradeshow.com. In 1998, Riza or Ray Gazanuri founded a company dedicated to producing handmade jackets and bags produced from premium Italian leather. That company, Moda Impelle Forensia. Now, in 2002, that company expanded to the United States where it has continued to serve customers through a network of retailers and is set to introduce an entirely new line, which he and Lisa Wicks will tell us all about. In addition to bringing his Italian leather expertise to the U.S., Ray brought his love of running. Since running his first marathon in Italy in 1994, he's competed in more than 100 marathons and ultramarathons around the globe in more than 50 cities in Europe and the U.S.A., Lisa, on the other hand, is an Arizona horsewoman with a fashion background and a transplant to Arizona from New York. This should and will be a fun episode of Wisdom by Wessa. Hey, Ray and Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today on the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Yay, thank you. Thank you We're so glad that. to have you on here. The company's got an interesting story, an interesting history, clearly an interesting and very high quality fashion line. Ray, you started the company back in the late 90s. Maybe what we should do is have you kind of quickly bring us up to date uh, from when you started the company and maybe even why to where we are today, marketing your garments throughout the country, you working out of Southern California, Lisa working out of Arizona, participating as we're so happy to learn with Wessa. Yes, for sure. Um, uh, I based this company in 1998 in Florence, Italy. Uh, and um, we mostly... Um, we're marketing for Japan and United States market. Then after 2001 uh, event, which the towers came down and uh, the world changed a bit. 
So uh, we didn't have uh, more uh, American tourists to come to Italy. Uh, and at that point, we said, okay, now we have to go to America. And so I came here in 2002, and I registered the branch of the company in uh, California. And since 2004, we are operative. And uh, we have passed uh, at least three big crises so far. Now, if I understand correctly, <clears throat> while you're here and you are marketing to and through uh, the retailers in the United States, you're still handmaking and handcrafting and designing your garments in Italy. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Uh, our production is exclusively made in Italy. And, uh, for example, our uh, jackets, uh, I work with a family which now is third generation uh, making jackets. We have our designers, our uh, uh, sewers, our people who um, buy the scratch, the leather, lining stuff, and they put them all together and then uh, they ship them over. Uh, if I am a retailer here in the United States and I want to carry your line, do I market just off a few samples and then have you produce what my customer wants and send it to me? Or do I carry an inventory? Or how does that work both uh, in the jackets, the men's, the women's, and the bags? Uh, yeah, cycle is a bit different as what normally uh, people think. And we have always to be six months ahead of time. This one means, for example, at Vesa, January, we get order which should be delivered in September because mostly people don't wear leather jackets in uh, summer especially. Uh, our high season is uh, fall and winter. At this point, uh, we can deliver any order uh, between six to eight weeks and even if there is some emergency or some business has some event and a specific timing, we can even uh, deliver any number of uh, orders uh, less than four weeks. Um, the shipment is all by flight, um, 48 hours UPS, and uh, they come first to our center in San Diego, and then uh, we dismiss them to different stores around the country. So, and Lisa, I want to get you in the conversation here as well. After you came to the United States to open up the market, uh, and Lisa, you spent a lot of time talking to retailers uh, as well. What's the process that you use to approach a retailer so that on his end and your end, the sales, the marketing, the product selection, and the shipping uh, goes uh, smoothly? Well, usually we either meet at a WISA show or I approach them via email, phone call, or sometimes even a store visit. And then we kind of get a feel for each other. You know, what's their store carrying? Most store owners or buyers know what they're looking for. And we fill that void. Um, and if I can help you out, I certainly will. So we'll many times recommend, you know, maybe a certain bag or a certain jacket or a certain line and a run of sizes to assist you. And then, you know, sometimes we're approached by stores as well to have some private labeling done. And that's where Ray comes back into the picture. <laughs> and um, we can do custom colors and all of that for you, specifically for that particular shop. And how would you how, how would you describe typical probably isn't the correct word, but based on the style you carry, the fashions you carry, the price point you carry, what tends to be the the demographics uh, of the retailers and their customers that become the strong market for you? Yes, we uh, mainly produce two kind of production. Uh, we have uh, handbags and jackets. Uh, consider handbag has a very wide uh, range of stores. You just imagine a women boutique, shoe store, 
a jewelry store, um, leather store, whatever store, they touch a product for women, they have a they have a handbag. So for handbag, we have a, I can guess about 100, 120 stores around the country. Uh, our leather jackets are a bit more specific and a bit more high prices. We never uh, sacrifice our quality for price. We never impo- import anything from China or Southeast Asia. Uh, our retail jackets over thousand dollars in the stores. So for that one, we have to be very careful that that store being the right store. And for that one, normally our rep before placing order or so, we have some kind of questionnaire for the owners or the buyer. And once they are approved, then uh, we send them the product. This is not an easy task, but it's what we do. I think that's, no, that makes a a great deal of sense. Now, on your website, I watched an interview you did, uh, a video interview, I think it was with Horse Trader. And one of the things you mentioned that I thought was intriguing was you have a, you have a great return policy. Yes, we do. Go ahead, Ray. Oh, oh yes. Yes. This uh, product should not be a break or tear or whatever you can imagine uh, for just a mass production product. Uh, product. Uh, these are lifetime, sometimes from father to son. Yes, sir. But you were mentioning if there is a problem with the garment at all, all they need to do is send it back to you. Exactly. Which is a pretty good return policy. My guess is the quality built into the product means that doesn't happen very often. But I thought it was interesting to mention because you did make uh, uh, quite a uh, you did make quite a bit of a discussion about it uh, in the video that I watched. Uh, Indeed, Uh, consider uh, we don't have not even three percent of return. And that one also mostly in handbag line, uh, like uh, buckles or things or uh, screws or stuff like that. But uh, we don't have any issue with leather, specifically leather. If this leather has to be problem, it gets out of the range. Sometimes we have a style that the accessories are not appropriate. They are out of the style. What's important for us not selling more, but having a better reputation of made in Italy. Well, and I think that probably is one of the key uh, one of the key selling points on that. I do want to talk about the new line, but uh, we have a lot of retailers, as you can imagine, members of WESA who listen to this show, and one of them, uh, you know, many of them, we hope right now are listening and saying, "Gee." I, I, I haven't carried that line, but I got a feeling I've got a customer base that would like it. Uh, Lisa, how does this get started? Do they have to wait? How can I, as a retailer, reach out to you if I want to begin carrying the line? Well, you can go to our website or you can reach out and email me or contact me personally. Um, and then I follow up with either an email or a call, however you want to be contacted with. And I find, especially since COVID, more and more of my customers are getting very comfortable with either a FaceTime chat or a Zoom chat. And I walk you through the sample line. And then if you need to see a couple of samples, I can always pop them into UPS, ship them out to you, let you look at them. And then we put a return label in and you either send them back to us or you keep them and add them to your line and place an order. And that's how easy it is. And, okay. and sometimes I walk right into your store, you know, with the, I, I just did that the other day. <laughs> so it depends, you know, how it is that you want to do it. But a lot of it um, is actually depending where you are in the country now either a video chat or an email and we can ship you a sample and you can take a look at it. And if I'm close enough, I'm happy to walk in and and visit with you. Now let's talk about something else because there's a new line coming 
and it's called the Yellowstone Line. You and I talk, let's uh, <clears throat> not confuse our listeners, it's called Yellowstone, uh, which is the name of a very famous park and forest area here in the United States, but by coincidence, we also have one of the most popular television shows in the country that is called Yellowstone, but you are not linking together with and marketing with that television series. This is a standalone line that is called Yellowstone uh, without a relationship with the television series. I want to make sure that we make that clear. Thank you for making that clarification because should you look through our catalog or our website, we also have the Tuscany collection that well precedes the Yellowstone collection. So um, you'll see, uh, Ray, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're going to end up with some other national park collections as well as we move forward. So tell me about the Yellowstone collection. Tell our listeners. I mean, I'm just one and you can't build your business on me. Uh, but tell our listeners about the Yellowstone collection, what it is, when it's coming, what you think it will add to their lines, what else they can offer to their customers who are probably pretty satisfied with what you got already. Well, our Yellowstone line um, dovetails beautifully into our Tuscany line. So again, it's all Italian leather. It's all handmade. It's it's just a beautiful line. Um, and so part of it, there is a bit of a cowboy slant to it or a Western slant. Um, and we've also done some concealed carry styles. In this day and age, people are carrying more often and If you're of the mind to carry and you want it to be concealed, I feel it should look concealed, not, hey, I'm carrying. Um, So we go through a lot, a lot of time to make sure that the garment is right to fit should you choose to carry a firearm. So we have both in the Yellowstone collection, concealed carry, and then we have jackets and bags that are not concealed carry but it's a really wonderful beautiful line we have deerskin vests with double collars for women in two lengths we have um, a brushed antelope for men in the armando it's a beautiful beautiful drawstring jacket Um, and ray if i'm going off course please jump in here but um, it fits everybody. It's our lines are beautiful because we are an Italian company and it's Italian design, but all of our patterns to the retailers out there, we are known for our fit because we build these pieces for the American body. So it's an American pattern with an Italian design. So you never have to worry when you're walking in with a customer, if it's going to fit them. But the real selling point of that is going to be a shift, if you will, or an adjustment in a fashion of which the concealed carry feature is a bonus. It's just a bonus. You know, if they want to slide their iPad in there, they can. <laughs> you know, um, it's really up to them. But we're now with this Yellowstone collection, we're doing a Jackson vest that's made out of buffalo. And it's just stunning. It's got a double zipper. It's cut beautifully. And the lines on our Italian garments, you know, if you're a man, it's cut to enhance your shape. If you're a woman, it's cut to enhance your shape. The stitching, the seaming, the zippers, you know, in in a lesser product, you're going to see the lining come right up to the zipper. In ours, you're going to see a couple of inches of leather coming up to the zipper, both in and outside of the garment. Actually, you mentioned something, and I want to ask Ray about it. Ray, when I was watching the video, you also were making an effort to draw special attention to the linings of your uh, of your jackets. Could you talk about that a bit? Uh, yes, for sure. Um, let me, uh, uh, before uh, going through the lining, uh, just... Uh, uh, correct that line, which is uh, Yellowstone Italian style. And we've been working on that line more than two two years because a line of production doesn't come up with few months. We have to do tens of samples and look at them and try them and test them. 
And then once we offer it to the stores, they are 100% perfect. Not only with the, with the style, but also with the lining, with accessories, with everything that you can imagine. Yes, the lining of our production is not polyester. We use a, a material which is called viscous, uh, viscosa in Italiano. And this one here doesn't create heat in your body. If you wear this uh, jacket for hours, you don't feel heat or sweat or uh, after a while doesn't get uh, smell. They are all uh, company logo lines. And uh, it, it's the best material to make a uh, to make for a leather jacket. And then you should consider in, uh, in our uh, Toscany line, uh, they are not the jacket that you really need it. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, many ladies like to wear things that just, they are beautiful and they feel good and they feel more um, uh, high, I would say. Uh, this uh, line is that one there. The weight of the jacket is not more than two pounds. You wear it uh, hours, you don't feel it. They are water resistant. And the quality leather is premium Italian lambskin. Uh, this is what we produce. Then the uh, line, uh, the Yellowstone Italian style line, that one mainly is the cowboy. Uh, oriented and uh, this vest and jacket that we make from buffalo skin it was a very good boom uh, last season and it keep going there is not a day that we don't get any order of those and we are developing in this line uh, some new style for next season uh, and uh, we are happy about that so is the new line now available to retailers or what's the timing on uh, uh, when the retailers will have the line to give to their customers? Uh, yes, we don't have anything ready to sell. Everything should be ordered. And once they, they order the place, six to eight weeks we deliver to the store. There is no extra charges. There is no hidden costs. All shipment, uh, importation, taxes, and things paid by us. The price that we deal with is the price you pay. So they can order it now. You just don't have it here now. Uh, no. Unfortunately, we don't produce uh, just to pro for production uh, to see who orders to send it. Uh, few stuff we have here and there. Uh, but not like your order. Like, for example, uh, recently an order, a store ordered 80 pieces, uh, which then uh, even tailors can make 80, 80 pieces in short time. Uh, they are delivering it uh, 20 to 30 pieces at a time. Today I received another 35 pieces of 80, and uh, we, we, let, we, we tell them, we say, okay, you order your place. We do the best we can. We don't want to waste your time or our time. But there are some limitations. These are handmade. These are not mass production. And tailors must to look at every single piece of the leather. And every leather jacket is made from 72 pieces. And then the tailors, some tailor has to sew it, and some others has to make uh, the lining. And then another group that then the joint lining to the leather is not a work of a person is a team of the person and then at the end it comes up what we call it uh, made in italy made in italy means style means fashion means new things and that's what we try to deliver to the market every season Understood. Now, Ray, I'm going to change topics just a little bit because I was reading uh, some background in material that tells me uh, that you are a runner. You've run in 100 marathons or ultra marathons in 50 cities in Europe and the U.S. And what I want to know is how do you have time to sell fine leather garments and run around the world? <laughs> yes, that is true. I started my first marathon in 1994 in Florence, Italy. 
And since uh, I have run 109 marathons and over, I train four days a week. I run about 30 to 40 miles a week. It is my passion, um, but I don't see any uh, impediment for my work or is not a work, is a passion. I like my job, uh, uh, this making, selling, buying, chatting, going to Italy, back here, go there. I do it with all my heart. There's nothing to be forced. And I think it's a pleasure of life. So when you're running, are you still thinking about business or is that your chance to get away from business? No, actually, many times when I ran, I found the answer. <laughs> I thought that might be the case, I, but I, I was just impressed that 100 is a number. I just think, uh, uh, you know, we always like to find out what the people are like behind the brands when we do this show, because uh, uh, there's lots of people who run out there who listen to uh, uh, our show as well. And I it was just kind of an interesting thing to bring up. Uh, before we bring this to a close, are there anything, is there any topic or any thought uh, between the two of you that we've missed that we want to mention before we all say goodbye? I would just kind of reiterate what Ray was saying is that we are an Italian made company and our fashion, you know, we're suitable for the person that wants a great investment piece to hang in their closet, maybe for generations. And we're also suitable for that guy or girl that may want a collection. But when you buy a piece from m and Moda in Pele Forense, it's quality. And you'll notice it and your friends and family will notice it. And when you walk in a room, people will probably follow you around <laughs> wondering where you got that piece. So I think that's probably all I'd add. Ray, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yes. Uh, in uh, 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 Concerning what you say, in fact, uh, we have uh, over 75 to 80 percent of return customers. When they uh, carry our product, they get lots of compliments. Uh, this is not something you can find in department stores or in uh, um, cheap leather stores. Uh, people uh, wearing these coats, they have certain uh, social classes. And uh, a bit of prices also, I can mention that uh, most of our handbag line is still are at the pre-pandemic prices. And this is what really we try always to do. Because as more we sell, more they gain. Yeah, it's how I met Ray. I was at Cowboy Christmas last year and bought a concealed carry bag and started talking to him because I knew Italian leather and I knew firearms and ended up working for him um, because I believe that strongly in his product. His, his line is beautiful. You just... It doesn't matter if there's a concealed carry component in one part of one line, but the rest of the products are are just first class. You're not for our price point. You will not find our garments exceed our price point. How's that? Okay. Well, listen, hey, it's been great to have the two of you here talking about a line that maybe not everybody knows about, business model that, uh, uh, you know, I think has been very successful for you. And uh, on behalf of the good folks at WESA, we know you'll be at our next show. But for uh, at this point in time, we just want to thank you for sharing your story to all of the people uh, in the Western retailing world and the Hunter Jumper world who listen to us that now they know more about what you're all about. So thanks so much for the time. You're and welcome. Mike, uh, we, will, we will be at the VESA January in Booth 902. And we welcome to any new um, accounts that they want to look at our product and they want to uh, test it. Thank okay. You so much. Yeah, we thank you so much for the opportunity to speak not only with you, but with everyone at WESA. They've been amazing to us. So thank you so much for the opportunity. And um, yeah, shout out to the horsemen there as well. The show notes for today's show and links from the show are available at the website wisdombywessa.com. Now, we, of course, love to hear your feedback. There's a contact link on that website.
The Wisdom at Western Show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players. You can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on iOS or Android. Just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom Bell Wessa podcast. Wessa, where the industry meets. <laughs>